Hello, I'm Doc Overholt, and uh, we be we're doing this study on Colossians that we were doing Wednesday night at the Midway Baptist, and uh, Pastor's been so gracious uh, over a couple of years to have me share in the Wednesday night services, and I just want to welcome you to our study. We're in the book of Colossians, uh, a book. Uh, I don't know why through the years I hadn't put a lot of time into. Uh, I'd done a lot of things with uh, Paul's uh, writings and uh, studies, and uh, but last year I picked it up and decided that uh, I was just going to study Colossians rather than read through the Bible, rather than uh, do some other studies. And for the first three months, I did nothing but study the book of Colossians. And uh, I, I kind of, after I was done with it, was kicking myself and saying, now, why didn't I do this more? And so I welcome you in our study, uh, Colossians. Uh, our study uh, will be on Colossians 1, 9 through 12. And we have studied so far, we've taken this, it's a prayer, and it's a prayer, of course, of Paul. Uh, he'd been told about this church of Colossians. Paul had never been to Colossians, and as far as we know, never did get to Colossians. That's why you don't find it written in the book of Acts with Paul's journeys. And so Colossians uh, was a church that... Uh, one of his, we believe, disciples uh, started, and uh, he decided that uh, when he heard about it, that uh, he wanted to write them. Probably this disciple came out of Paul's ministry in Ephesus because this church was about 100 miles away, and as again I said, it was not started by Paul. And so he writes to the city of Colossae, we call the book, the book, of course, of Colossians. And as he wrote to them, uh, he decided that he needed to give them some encouragement, some advice, some correction. And can't we all use that sometimes? Uh, and most of us uh, don't take correction probably very well. And, uh, but Paul was trying to get this church that had believed in Jesus Christ and was being infiltrated uh, apparently by Judaizers, by uh, others who claimed they had a special knowledge. And so there was a lot of things going on and Paul decides that he will write to this church. I want to read right now and rather than read out of the King James, which we have done for the last three weeks, I wanted to kind of read it out of uh, the New International Version. And this says, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, there's the key, we heard about you. We have not stopped praying for you. Isn't that great? He never even went there and he's praying for him. He said, When I heard about you, I started praying. And we continually ask God to fill you with knowledge of His will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. You'll notice in your Bible, Spirit is capitalized. So it's not our Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit. Wisdom and understanding that the Holy Spirit gives. Verse 10, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Uh, a lot's been said in that prayer. 
And that's why we spent three weeks on it. We spent three weeks trying to pick and choose and, and pull out uh, the gems that Paul has given us here. So far we've covered, and we'll do this fairly quickly, but uh, I want us, uh, those who are maybe just picking up uh, with this one, by the way, uh, you can go to YouTube and pick all the back ones up as well, uh, but this is a pickup just on 9 through 12 here. And so Colossians 1.9, uh, we call this uh, message, Be Filled. And, uh, you know, we can fill ourselves with a lot of junk. I want you to know that. We can put in our minds and hearts things that are not godly. But this Be Filled is to be filled by the things of God. And you know what? As you as a Christian fill the spiritual side of you, the stronger the spiritual side of your being gets, the weaker the flesh is, the weaker the old nature is. Paul battled that. We saw Paul battling that when he speaks to us in Romans 7. And he says, Oh, wretched man that I am. And uh, he had tried to live the Christian life in the old nature. You can't do it. You're a failure. You must live the Christian life by the Holy Spirit in that new consciousness and spirit that God gives you. So in that, he says we're to be filled. We saw we were to be filled with knowledge from God. That's where we grow. Uh, knowledge is the taking in of facts and the gleaning of things that God wants us to know. And of course, that comes from the Word of God. It says, then we have to be filled with wisdom. In fact, we know out of Proverbs, it says that God is the giver of both knowledge and wisdom. And uh, He's a God. And so the knowledge that uh, we have, God already knows, you know. These scientists that are developing things, uh, uh, God knows. God knew about COVID-19. Uh, he knew that uh, the scientists and uh, these research labs would get this on the market five times faster than any medication has ever happened. Do you think that surprised God? No. Uh, God lives in the past, the present, the future. Nothing surprises him. Nothing that he doesn't know. And so even when we see man developing things, we give praise to man. I believe all real wisdom comes from God. Comes from God. So the knowledge is from God and we have his word. Uh, the wisdom comes through the Holy Spirit living in us, helping us to do the right thing. You know, you can have a lot of knowledge and not be very wise. Uh, what do you mean by that, Pastor? I mean that you can gain a lot of knowledge, but if you don't have God's wisdom, uh, your knowledge, if you don't find Jesus, you don't find His way, uh, all your knowledge won't help you when you stand before the judgment seat and God says, I never knew you. And so real knowledge comes from the Word and by salvation and knowing God. And, and then we find that as we study, the Holy Spirit takes that and makes that wisdom in our lives, allows us to choose what's best. And then we saw the last thing in our first week's study on this. And uh, by the way, we won't be reviewing any of this next week. Uh, we're doing this because uh, this is kind of a little capsule inside this whole study of the book of Colossians. And so it allowed us to do uh, verse 9 and then verse 10. And today we finish up with the 11 and 12. And so uh, next week we'll start out uh, fresh uh, with a new set of verses. And uh, there won't be any review. So we hope this will be helpful to you. Colossians 1.10 we studied. And we found we were to walk with God. We were to be filled with the things of God in the first one. Now, you know, once you begin to learn and once you get God's wisdom, 
it's not enough to have that. You got to begin to use it. And I want you to know that when Paul uses, he uses it in Ephesians. He uses it here where to walk with God. You know what he's saying? We're to live day by day for God. It's a daily thing. It's it's a, not something that we do on Sunday. It's something you do when you go to work, when you go to play, when you go to school, uh, when you go on vacation. Uh, you know, you should be walking with God. You should be living for Him. And so our title is Walking with God, or you could say, if you like to say it, living with God and living God's way. Our first thing is we are to have a worthy walk. It's a worthy walk. And so as God starts walking with us, he wants us to walk worthy. You know, I heard of a deacon one time, a pastor was stating it to some of us other pastors. And he said to uh, one deacon and I each week went out and called on anyone who was new in the church. And we stopped at this one place and uh, we got talking and uh, getting to know them. And uh, they said, well, where do you work? Because, oh, I work in such and such a place. I won't give you the name. <laughs> but uh, I work in such and such a place. And uh, the deacon that was with the pastor says, oh, he says, one of our deacons works there. And uh, uh, the fellow said, well, what's his name? And I think this is something no pastor wants to hear. Here was the reply of this visitor that had come to this church. And this wasn't Midway. These things don't happen at Midway. But uh, uh, this, this fellow uh, said, oh, yes. Uh, uh, and the fellow said, you mean he's a Christian? I know, you know, I, I'd have been set back in my seat as pastor if he says, oh, you mean he's a deacon? Because a deacon is supposed to be a person who is living for God, is leading an example, is helping people in the church to grow, is, be, is vital to the pastor's work and to the church's work. And uh, this fellow didn't even get that credit. This fellow, the guy said, you mean he's a Christian. And to me, that's sad. Uh, uh, when I walk in this world uh, at home, wherever I am, if I'm at a ball game or I'm, I'm preaching or I'm out or when I was able to go to the mission, uh, uh, in the, uh, many things I did, uh, I always live for the Lord. And when you live for the Lord every day, people see that in you. And that's what you need to do. Knowing things about God being uh, filled with knowledge, you need to fill with God's wisdom. When you're filled with God's wisdom, you begin to walk with Him. You begin to do the things you want with that God wants you. So the first thing God wants us is a worthy walk. The next thing was a pleasing walk. Uh, you know, and I don't think he means pleasing to people around us, though that should be. Pleasing to God. Uh, I hope you know that you're a child of the King. And God chose you. And when you and I act like sons and daughters of the kingdom, that pleases God. That pleases God. And so he wants us to have a pleasing walk. He wants us to have a fruitful walk. A fruitful walk. Uh, a walk that uh, uh, bears fruit. Uh, I think it should bear fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, and all that. Uh, those things ought to be uh, in our lives. But I think he also means there, by bearing fruit, that we work with other people, that 
every every Christian sometime in his life should have led somebody to the Lord. Amen? Every Christian sometime in their life, and I'm saying this to you who are listening, we ought to have sometime in our life led someone to know Jesus Christ and watch the change in their life. To know that the fruitful walk brings fruit to others, encouragement to others. So we're to walk worthy, we're to walk pleasing, we're to have a fruitful walk. And then finally, we're to have a knowledgeable walk. You know, I know sometimes as I've talked to people and they have talked to me on things and come up with a question, I've always been interested how God will take some verse that I maybe hadn't thought of in a long time and he'll use that one to speak to that person. And I may never use that verse again to lead or to talk to anyone else. Who did that? Well, I thank God that was the knowledge coming from the Holy Spirit. But it also what meant that I had to study that verse at some time in my life. I had to put that in my heart. David says, you know, thy word have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against you. I love that verse. Because as we study the word, we take in a knowledge. And so we have a worthy walk, a pleasing walk, a fruitful walk, a knowledgeable walk. Let us get into our study uh, for this day. And we're going to be looking at the last of this prayer. Now we've looked at verse 9. We looked at verse 10. And now we're going to be looking at verses 11 and 12. And we look here, uh, we've been asked so far to be filled, we're asked to be walking. Uh, now we're to be strengthened. Uh, we all need to continue to grow. I have been serving the Lord for a long time. Uh, being saved, uh, around the age of 10, you know. And I have to tell you, I had the privilege of growing up in a godly family. I know some of you listening have not had that and got saved later in life. But I thank God, uh, my aunts and uncles, most of them that I knew, knew the Lord. And I, that's such a wonderful heritage that God gave me of people who God... Uh, in a family had one and you know I was touched in church I went to church from the time I probably was wrapped up my mom carried me to church and I was moved and I remember raising my hand as a child and said yes I'd like to but I really believe the day that I really knew Jesus was the day my grandma and I were sitting on the couch and she started talking about the things of Jesus and as we talked about the things of Jesus coming from my grandma, you know, grandmas uh, are the top of the, uh, of the turntable there, you know. And uh, uh, I loved my grandma. And as she talked to me, she said, you know, wouldn't you like to receive Jesus? And I know I was off from school because I remember bounding out the front after this. As hot sunny day and I you know uh, summertime uh, but we we in front of my grandma's couch bowed and said the sinner's prayer and something happened in my life as a 10 year old and you know I hear you know I, I work I have worked if some of you don't know uh, as directors of several rescue missions around our country and have worked with people who have tremendous testimonies. They, they were in the gutter. They, they lived in a field for years. They, they did this, they did that. 
and God wonderfully saved them. And you know, sometimes we who came to know the Lord at a younger age say, man, I don't have that testament. Man, you know, uh, you know, I wasn't a thief and a robber and God turned me around. I wasn't a drug addict and God changed my life. Uh, and you know, one day God, you know, every once in a while he has to use a two by four in our head. You know, where it kind of goes, and God spoke to me one day, and uh, now I'm not talking about it out loud. God has spoken to me in my mind numerous times where I know it's God. And God said to me, listen, you have a great testimony because it took as much of my grace to keep you living for me as it did for me to win that person out of that awful situation. He said, I kept you from things. I, I, I moved you out of the way many times that you didn't get into those things. I never again wanted to have somebody else's testimony because God made it clear to me that yes, I didn't get into this and I didn't get into that. And, and But God told me, that's because I kept you from it. And that power that it took to take somebody out of it is the same power, Christian, that keeps you from it. And I want you to know that we are strengthened by God and that's what God wants for us. In this, and I'll just read that again. Let me put my glasses on. I, I, I need them to read now. Uh, it says in verse 11, being strengthened with all power according to his gracious might so that we may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. And as you look at this, we see that Paul says to us, in, in verse and then verse 12 and giving joyful thanks to the father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of life and so he wants us to have power that comes out of verse 11 being strengthened that's his power he says here that uh, being strengthened with all power according to his gracious might the end of his working in us that we should have endurance and patience. What that say? Said endurance and patience. And one of my favorite sayings, and it's not in the Bible, uh, but I, I, I use it all the time. Uh, if you ever get an email from me, uh, often at the end of it, it'll say, keep on keeping on. Uh, endurance and patience. Endurance is uh, you grow. You learn the things of God. And uh, uh, most of us who are older Christians, I'm betting you have a whole lot more patience today than you had in the beginning. And because uh, uh, we've what? We've endured some hardships. We've endured some things that uh, have, have made us cling to God and trust God and know that God has the answer. And uh, I know that uh, a lot of times some of my doctors, and it seems since I had the heart bypasses and then the cancer, I have wound up with a ton of specialists. <laughs> uh, uh, specialist here and a specialist there uh, but you know I, I want to be a witness to them when they told me about cancer I immediately said to the doctor I said heaven's not a penalty and I've gone at this that I'm going to keep living I'm going to be alive as long as the Lord wants me to be and I want to be useful for him uh, inoperable cancer doesn't mean anything to God I want you to know that doesn't mean anything to God. And so we endure, we have patience. 
out of verse 11 also here, we see we, we, we have his power, we have endurance, that patience, but it's for his pleasure. Why has he done all these things that we have read about today in verses 9, 10, and now 11 and 12? It brings pleasure to him to see us walk with him, to love him, to serve him, to do his will, his pleasure. And then finally in verse 12, we have, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his kingdom. God's provision, God has provided. And he says, giving joyful thanks in that. Uh, his power is for any one of us. We learn patience through endurance and through walking with him. Uh, Paul said, I glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation works patience, patience experience, and experience hope. Wow. When's the last time you said you gloried in your tribulation? Paul said, I do because I know that made me grow. And so today we have looked at his power, his patience, his pleasure, and then his provision. Uh, God has provided everything I believe we need to be successful and faithful and loving and serving the Lord. And I pray as you've listened to this, as we come towards the Christmas season, normally as if I was passionate at church, I would stop this series and we'd have been this whole month preaching about Jesus coming to our planet and becoming one of us and then dying for us. But uh, I am not going to do that. I'm going to leave that to the pastor. I am going to keep going through Colossians. And so uh, next week we'll begin uh, with verse 13. And by the way, if you stick with me, uh, we will probably over this, believe it or not, next year, <laughs> uh, finish this book of Colossians. There's four chapters, and I think we're maybe in our fifth or sixth week now, and we're just to verse 12. But listen to this. I have a book in my library, written by, I think written by Thomas Goodwin, uh, that is on the book of Ephesians. And he began writing this, and I believe that he used 500 pages almost and he was just into chapter 2 of the book of Ephesians and uh, probably near the end of it and someone else had to pick up and finish his study and he managed to get uh, 3 through 6 done in the next 200 pages so it took one guy 500 pages and uh, what studying that is? You think of that, 500 pages. I, I know, I know that Spurgeon called the Prince of Preachers over in England, studied the book of of the Psalms uh, for 20 years as part of his study routine, and when he finally finished the last Psalm, the 150th Psalm. He said, I feel like I'm leaving a friend. Can you imagine? We can't study too deep. We can't study too much. And I pray this has encouraged you to be a studier of God's Word. Again, this has been Pastor Darwin Overholt. And I pray that uh, this prayer out of the book of Colossians will be a blessing. Lord, we thank you for your Word. We pray, make us useful through it in Jesus' name. Amen.